Just before we get started with today's video, I do want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring it. To support Today I Found Out and learn more about Brilliant, please go to brilliant.org slash today I found out and sign up for free. When it comes to spiders, people generally know two facts about them. That you swallow around eight of them per year and that their blood is bright blue. Fortunately, the former is absolutely not true at all, and the latter on the other hand, is mostly correct. While it's certainly true that spiders have blue liquid in their veins, the reality is a bit more grounded than is sometimes depicted, with the fluid being a much more reserved shade of bluish green. Also, thanks to the fact that spiders are generally so tiny and contain very little liquid, you're not going to see that much after squishing one. It should also be noted that unlike humans, spiders have what is known as an open circulatory system. Essentially, their blood is allowed to mix with all the interstitial fluids within their bodies. The scientific term for this mixture is hemolymph, which is a combination of the Greek word for blood, hema, and the Latin word for water, lymph. And it's defined as the circulating fluid in many invertebrates that is functionally similar to the blood and lymph of vertebrates. So what in this mixture is causing the fluid in the spiders to turn blue? Well, as you may recall, humans and indeed all mammal blood is red because of the presence of the protein hemoglobin. The reason hemoglobin makes blood red instead of, say, green is because of the presence of iron as an oxygen-carrying pigment. And let's quickly debunk another popular blue blood myth here. No, deoxygenated human blood does not turn blue. It turns actually a dark red. On a related note, the red juice that you see in red meat at the grocery store is not blood, it's mostly myoglobin. Myoglobin is a protein that stores oxygen in muscle cells, very similar to its cousin, hemoglobin, that stores oxygen in red blood cells. This is necessary for muscles which need immediate oxygen for energy during frequent continual usage. Myoglobin is highly pigmented, specifically red, so the more myoglobin, the redder the meat will look and the darker it will get when you cook it. In any event, spiders and other arthropods don't have hemoglobin in their bodies, rather they have a protein known as hemocyanin. This contains copper instead of iron. However, hemocyanin isn't bound to any cells in the creature's body like hemoglobin is. Instead, it just grooves around their circulatory system at its leisure. The result in spiders is less than impressive because their bodies contain so little hemolymph to start with. In larger anthropods, though, this effect it can actually be quite stunning. For example, the blood of the horseshoe crab is a delicate shade of baby blue thanks to the presence of hemocyanin, as is the blood of lobsters, crayfish, and most mollusks like slugs and snails. But what's even more fascinating and unique about horseshoe crab blood is a chemical that's found in the amoebocytes of its blood. When this is exposed to a potentially dangerous foreign bacterium, it will immediately coagulate around the threat, rendering it harmless without actually destroying it. This effect is near instant, and the blood can be used to detect a potential threat, even if it's diluted as much as one part in a trillion. This effect is amazingly useful for detecting bacterial contamination in things like medicines and vaccines, or medical equipments like needles, pacemakers, and numerous other items that are required to be sterile. In fact, no drug on the market today can be certified by the FDA unless it has been tested using this exact method, which is known as the Limulus amoebocyte lysate test. It is by far the best way that scientists are aware of for detecting whether a batch of medicine or vaccine has been compromised or not. As such, the blood of these crabs is worth a small fortune, selling for around $60,000 per gallon. If you're wondering how this blood is harvested, the crabs, over half a million per year, are carefully picked up when they visit the shore for breeding purposes, and they're taken in cooled trucks to certified labs where around 30% of their blood is drained. After this process, they are returned to the sea. The blood cells are then separated using a centrifuge. Next, the isolated cells are placed in distilled water where they will eventually burst. And for more about why that happens, you can see our video Why Salt Preserves Meat. This bursting releases the valuable chemical inside. After being purified, it is then freeze-dried and stored to be used for testing. Approximately 85-97% to of the crabs harvested for this purpose survive and go their merry way. The crabs' blood levels return to normal within a week. Even with relatively good survival rates, all of this might sound harsh, but there is one type of animal besides humans that is glad for this property of horseshoe crab blood. And this animal, well, that would be the rabbit. Before the horseshoe crab blood method of detecting microbial contaminants, a much less accurate and time-consuming system involved testing on live rabbits. In this rabbit pyrogen test, the rabbits were injected with a sample of the substance to be tested. 
So, to sum up, if you're not too technical in your definition of blood, spiders do have slightly blue fluid coursing through their bodies. Also, horseshoe crab blood may someday save your life if it already hasn't. Now, the chances are, if you've made it to the end of this video and you're watching this right now, you're probably interested in science. And that's good news because I think you'll enjoy today's sponsor as well. And that would be brilliant. Brilliant take complex scientific concepts and make them easy to learn and understand. They connect basic concepts to the cutting edge so that what you're learning is immediately applicable and you apply that knowledge immediately with brilliant through solving problems. It's a form of active learning that is just so much more effective than the passive learning that often exists in traditional academic settings. Things, think of just reading that textbook over and over again and not really absorbing the material. Brilliant have a rather new course about computational biology. So if you like the biology we touched on in today's video and you want to learn more about how that fits into modern science, then absolutely go and check out their course. Brilliant provides you with the frameworks for thinking about and solving problems so that you can apply them directly. They do not stress any blind memorization of formulas because that just reduces independent critical thinking. To support Today I Found Out and learn more about Brilliant, please go to brilliant.org slash today I found out and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people that go through that link will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. And as always, thank you for watching.